What is good, everybody? Welcome to the Gold Diggers podcast on the Gold Standard Podcast Network. I'm Rob Stats Guerrero. She's Mimosha Michelle Maju. Michelle, crazy stuff is happening in the NFL. It really is. I feel like every second I look at, down on my phone when there's a notification, it's something huge. I will say, do you not have notifications on for Ian Rappaport or Adam Schefter? Because I feel like I text you things. And you're like, what? What happened? Like, I, I was like, oh, wow, huge Aaron Donald news. And you're like, did he retire? I'm like, do you not have on the notifications for Schefter and Rappaport? I do, and I have them on lists. Look, I'm not always checking Twitter. I'm very busy it's here It's not today. about checking Twitter. It doesn't just pop up on your phone. Well, I don't, I'm not looking at my phone 24 7. I have wrote a long text. Yes, I did because I'm going to do a show with you. Um, I wrote a long article today about Kyle Shanahan, going to criticize him because I think he still doesn't get it. We'll get to that. We'll get to the Brandon IU trade stuff because um, more details emerged about how this all came to be and what might happen and what the 49ers might get for Brandon IU. So I want to get into all of that, but we got to start by talking about the Aaron Donald retirement because. It's huge news. He's one of the he is one of the five greatest defensive players in the history of the National Football League. He plays in the 49ers division, obviously, twice a year. The Rams, I'm sure this didn't catch the Rams by surprise, but it's still a big loss nonetheless. I mean, it's a huge loss. And I caught me by surprise. Maybe not them, but I did feel like they still had another year in them to compete. At least be, I mean, we would expect them to go to the playoffs again because they did it this year. But with, you know, put the offense growing again with Puka and Kyron Williams and Matthew Stafford back, the defense was so inexperienced last year. We couldn't believe that they actually performed as well as they did. It wasn't great, but well better than we expected. So I did think they had one more year in them with Matthew Stafford to try for this thing. So I'm shocked that Aaron Donald retired. And now with him retiring, I don't think they're a contender anymore. Maybe they sneak in still as a seventh seed of the playoffs, but he changes so much on that defense. That defense is going to go from maybe they're growing to just, that's a huge hit for them. It's a massive, massive loss. Uh, he just restructured his contract too. So I, I'm sure they knew that he was going to do it. You know, once you, start talking about retirement, you're kind of already retired. That's kind of a saying around the NFL that this popped up a couple years ago that maybe he was considering walking away. I mean, you're talking about a guy, he has his Super Bowl ring. He's got his defensive player of the year awards. Like there is, there is nothing left for him to accomplish that, that would complete his career. His co career is complete. And yeah, look, we heard retirement rumors with McVay. We heard him with Aaron Donald. He's going to be missed on that defense. I still think the Rams are going to be very good, but no question this is good news for the 49ers. And as the Rams put out in a tweet, quarterbacks rejoice because, yeah, Aaron Donald's not going to be there anymore. I mean, we've been talking about how we're worried about the offensive line, and I'm just joking. We still have to worry about the offensive line, but this helps to two games a year, not having to worry about Aaron Donald at all. I mean, it's just a massive blow to a division rival. So you're – I proud of what Aaron Donald did in his career. Happy for him. Good job, but happy to see him go as well. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm always rooting for people. The 49ers play to get weaker, especially when it doesn't involve an injury. And especially when it's in the division, that's yeah. fantastic news for the 49ers. Although I will say to his credit, Kyle Shanahan has done a pretty good job dealing with Aaron Donald. He hasn't really, you know, destroyed too many games, but Obviously, you would like for Kyle not to have to worry about Aaron Donald at all. And that's exactly what happened. Exactly. And it, even if he's shutting down Aaron Donald, he's using extra resources yes. to shut him down. So now he won't have to worry about that as much. And it should just be easier overall to play against the Rams. Hmm. Man, just induct him into the Hall of Fame right now, by the way. Forget the five year. Like, just put him in. He's just walk in with this class. That's the same thing when Tom Brady retired. Like, you know, yep. it's, just put him in. Just put him in already. So that is one less thing for the 49ers to worry about. I am happy with that. And, and congratulations, Aaron Donald. We wish you nothing but the best health, happiness, success, whatever you want to do in your post-retirement life. Good for you. Um, by the way, we appreciate this uh, channel from Marilee Murphy, who says your channel just keeps getting better and better. Keep it up. Makes my days better and more entertaining. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. that. Now, That's enough. Enough Rams talk, Michelle. We got to talk about the 49ers because there was something very interesting that happened on 95-7 the game this morning, and it involves Brandon Ayuk. If you've been living under a rock, uh, 
Mia O'Brien, who covers the Jags for 1010 XL, tweeted that there was mutual interest between the Jags and Brandon Ayuk's camp. And everybody was like, whoa, wait, what? What's going on? Brandon Ayuk's under contract with the 49ers. How are they contacting? How are the Jags contacting his camp? That's tampering. Like, what is going on? Well, Mia O'Brien was a guest on the morning roast on 95.7 The Game this morning and kind of cleared up what happened and how it's going down. And if you give me two seconds, I'll get a nice topic bar up about this, and then I'll continue telling the rest of the story. I will say I was confused about her tweet yesterday when she said Brandon or with the Jags and his team. I thought she meant the 49ers, and I thought me it was too. Weird. I thought it was weird that she said his team. I was like, why wouldn't she just say the 49ers? But she actually means like his team of like his agents and stuff like that. Yes, the IU camp, because I had the same exact thought. I was like, wait a minute, what? And then I, I did the same thing. It was like, you, it's much easier to just say 49ers. So something about this is off. So, yeah. yes, it's it's the interest is between the Jaguars and the 49ers. First of all, the tweet that she responded to was from at Pretty Ricky 213. Mia O'Brien was on 95.7 The Game, and she said that the, the general belief is that that account is connected to athletes first. That is the agency that represents Brandon Ayuk. It's also the agency that represents Calvin Ridley. And that is the key to all of this because the Jags were negotiating with Calvin Ridley. What Mia thinks happened is, and she said that a member of the Jaguars confirmed that there was interest. So I guess this did, she doesn't know how it happened, but she's connecting dots here. And what she said was during the negotiations for Calvin Ridley, which is a totally legal, totally, you know, on the up and up thing between the athletes first and the Jags during those talks, it's possible that somebody from athletes first said, Oh, by the way, we represent Brandon. Ayuk. We may be trying to find a new home for him, trying to see what's out there for him. Would you be interested in Brandon? Ayuk? That's not a hundred percent copacetic because he is under contract with the 49ers, but there's no way for anybody to prove it. There's no way like that, that happens all the time. Every team does that with every agent. Like I'm not criticizing the Jaguars at all, but that's how this whole report about mutual interest she thinks started is because during the negotiations with Ridley, Ayuk's name came up and the Jags said, yes, we would be interested. All right. But that is illegal, right? But there's just no way to like prove it because yes. the 49ers have not given Ayuk permission to go seek out a trade that would, they would have to give him permission in order for his agents to say something like that in calls. But we do know this happens all the time and yes. unless it's recorded or something, which I don't, there's different laws in different States, but they're <laughs> not going to be caught. Like that's just not going to happen. And there's but, no, the, yeah, because yeah, no. So say right now, the Jaguars it. offer the number 17th overall pick for Brandon Ayuk. You're John Lynch. You say yes or no? No, I need more than that. Whoa. Okay. And here's why. A.J. Brown was traded for pick number 18 and pick number 101. So if I'm John Lynch, I'm like, Brandon Ayuk has 2,000-yard seasons just and, like A.J. Yeah, Brown. Yeah, A.J. Brown, though, is a more dominant wide receiver one, in my opinion. Based on, I mean, they both had 2,000-yard seasons. Yeah. And they're both about the same age. AJ Brown played with Arthur Smith. Um, and you played with the, you, one uh, of the best play callers in the world. It's a good comp, though, because not only did you have to trade for AJ Brown, but the Eagles then had to give him a new deal, which is exactly what the Jaguars will do, you would think, with Brandon Ayuk. So if I'm John Lynch, look, you've got 17. That's good. The Jags have 96. They have 114. They have 116. If I'm John Lynch, I got to get more than one first round pick. I think that's fair. I don't know if he's going to get what AJ Brown got. And there was a comment saying AJ Brown and Ayuk have similar stats. That's not what I'm worried about. It's about the body type, what their potential is. And she, he said, she's thinking about what AJ Brown is today. We could all see what AJ Brown could turn into though. AJ Brown was a monster stuck on a run first team. And, you know, we all knew, and he also dealt with some injuries. We all knew his capability. I mean, he was a monster every time he touched the ball. I don't think Ayuk has the same ceiling as an AJ Brown. I don't think he's as dominant on the field as an AJ Brown. Uh, it's very rare to see AJ Brown just taken away in games, right? But I do think Ayuk's really good. Do I think if I got the choice of AJ Brown or Brandon Ayuk on the Steelers, I'm taking AJ Brown a hundred times out of a hundred times. No, and I, I, think, I think 49ers fans would take A.J. Brown over Brandon Ayuk 100 times out of 100 times. I could understand that, but 
I mean, from a pure football perspective, like the argument, IU basically had a comparable year. Now, AJ Brown had more touchdowns, I think, but like IU had a 1300 yard year last year on a team that threw the ball less than anybody else in the league. So if you want to say that AJ Brown was held back by Arthur Smith, I could easily make that argument with Brandon Ayuk in the 49ers. And he put up better numbers in that kind of offense than AJ Brown did. Yeah. It was easy for him to be very efficient in this offense. Yes. Now, here is the big thing. They asked Mia O'Brien again, who covers the Jags for 1010 XL. Would the Jags give up their first round pick for Brandon Ayuk? And she said she didn't think that they would. Now, she she said, I don't think they will because they have other needs they need to address. She did admit one of those needs is interior defensive line, which they did address with Eric Armstead. But she said she didn't see a world where the Jags would give up the first round pick for Brandon Ayuk. And if you don't get getting Brandon Ayuk, then I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You got to give up the first one. I mean, I'm saying he maybe doesn't get. AJ Brown, where you also get a third, but he at least is the first round pick and then probably a fourth or fifth rounder. Yes. Like it's, if you don't want to give up the first round pick, then you can't trade for him. I'm sorry. Yeah. The 49ers would certainly never, never do that without getting a first round pick. Um, Wouldn't it be hilarious though? If not only do the 49ers trade Brandon Ayuk, they trade him to the Jags, who of course their GM is Trent Balky, who used to be in San Francisco. And the reason that the Jags would be willing to do the deal is because they signed Eric Armstead, who used to play in San Francisco. That, that, that'd be a lot of tentacles to this thing. Well, and also the reason where they're willing to do it is because Calvin Ridley, who shares an agent with Ayuk, went somewhere else. Right. And that's the other part of this is the shared agency that sort of opened the door to this type of thing. I don't know, Michelle. I will say. I would love to see Ayuk with the Jaguars. I think that's a great fit for him. I think he can get 150 targets in that offense. And he can really prove that he's a wide receiver one there. Again, it's not about Ayuk's talent or not. The 49ers cannot pay Ayuk if he's not going to be. They cannot pay him 28 to $30 million a year if they're not going to utilize him as a true all volume wide receiver Mm -hmm. one it makes no sense for this offense to do that it makes no sense for this particular team to pay a guy that if he's not the focal point of your offense he can be the focal point of an offense with the jaguars then it makes sense for that team to pay him i totally agree if you're not going to use him why would you pay him that much money it doesn't make any sense you wouldn't pay a bad player that much money would you get the same production out of them if you're not going to use him so i completely agree with you Uh, If you decide that that's not the direction you're going to go, then there's no reason to pay him that much money. Mike Silver has an article out, and we're going to talk a lot about this article today on the show because there's a bunch of different things in there. But he writes in his latest article for the San Francisco Chronicle, he says the Niners could be headed for a messy contract stare down with Brandon Ayuk, who's currently slated to play on the fifth year option. This year's draft is considered receiver rich, meaning there might be an inflection point in late April, especially if Ayuk, like Debo, requests a trade. That's an interesting nugget to throw in there. That's almost like saying, well, we don't want to trade Ayuk, but if you request it, we will. I thought he already did request it. No, Ayuk has not requested a trade. Okay. He didn't... uh, he didn't exactly say he was dying to come back to San Francisco after the season when they said, do you want to come back? And I think he said, if that's the right move. So that wasn't, you know, a ringing endorsement, but he has not officially requested a trade. I just don't think he's going to get the payday he wants here. I don't know. He On will the open market, traded. he would get 28 plus a year. The 49ers, A, can't afford that, and B, it wouldn't make any sense for them to pay him that. Now, they can hold him, and, I mean, they have his rights for at least this year, then they could franchise tag him next year. Like, But is he going to be willing to play on that? How much trouble is he going to cause on that? What kind of headaches is that going to cause? That's the whole issue, right? I I agree. Um, I think they want to – I think what they really want to do is keep him on the fifth-year option. I That's think great. They, we all would like to do that. Like but, you can't, but it's like, will I, you do that happily? Will it, or cause what's a fight? His leverage? Will he sit out? Will he sit out or, and come in out of shape like Devo did? Or will he be upset? And like, I don't know. Like you, you don't really want an angry person in your locker room, right? Like that's never a positive. 
but like, okay. Especially you- because it's not just the fifth year option. It's not like, okay, I have one more year and then I get to be free. It's like, then he knows they're going to use a franchise tag on him. Like that has to feel so defeating. Like, Oh, that- 100%. <laughs> that has to be so irritating. You're going to be angry. No one works the best when they're, they don't feel appreciated by their company, right? That's not when you get the best work out of you. So I don't think that's the best route to go. And if it was just the fifth year option, he moves on them fine, but it's not just that. But like he, he can hold out great, but that's just going to cost himself money, especially with the way the CBA is now. They really do not make it a financially viable thing to hold out. So, I mean, if he's going to come in and, and, complain and be all that all right but then you're not exactly making yourself look great to your future employer whoever that might be unfortunately for Ayuk, i don't think he has a lot of options i don't think he has a lot of leverage and i think the 49ers could say look we're trying to keep this thing together for another year so we need you to play on the fifth year option the only counter to that argument is Ayuk could say if you sign me to an extension you lower my cap number this year so you know that would actually help the 49ers this year but I, I don't know. I don't know how this is all going to end. If you had to make a prediction, is number 11 still on the 49ers in 2024? Uh, because of how the 49ers front office works and they've shown they don't really treat their players like humans, I do think he's there, yes. I think he stays with the 49ers. I think he is there too. Although, I don't know. It depends on the draft. I mean, he. I could see him getting traded during the draft, ultimately. I could. If teams miss I used out about on to be receiver. 26. So that means if they kept him this year, next year, he wouldn't get hit the free agency till 28 years old and get his first big contract. That would stink. So I understand why you would want. Just give him the, either you, you say he's worth the money that other teams would pay him or he's not. And then, then you should trade him. Jesse Garcia says, Rob, this is my first episode since the Super Bowl loss. I still hate football, and I'm not liking the trade rumors. This is going to be a long offseason. Yeah, I think it is going to be a long offseason because I think the trade rumors with him are going to continue, and I think the trade rumors with Debo Samuel are going to continue as well. Jason Lock and Forrest said that the Ravens were inquiring about him. Uh, that account, that Twitter account we talked about, Pretty Ricky uh, 213 also talked about Debo you know, being available with the 49ers again that account is thought to be with athletes first so who knows but as long as Debo can get traded for a much lower cap hit post June 1 I think those questions are going to continue until we reach June and he's still on the team oh uh, yeah I, I I guess it comes down to who who do they feel better about Debo or you but I think in 2026, I definitely don't think both are on this team, right? So, or I mean, 2025. So it comes down to, can both of these guys play happily on the team together next year? Maybe they can get them to do that. I mean, winning helps a lot of things. So maybe Brandon Ayuk is fine. But, I mean, he's still going to make a lot of money on the fifth year option. He'd still make a lot of money. On 14 being, million. Yeah, that's not enough for him. And then he would still make, and I, I guess next year he would make a lot as a franchise tag, but. There's no security there. If he gets injured, he could lose out a ton of money. He may never get that big payday that he deserves. That is true. Uh, Kyler Murray just responded to Aaron Donald's tweet announcing his retirement and said, thank God. (laughs) I'm sure many quarterbacks feel that way. Brisby Life watching on Twitch. Shout out to the Twitch fam. We love you. We thank you very much. Says if Ayuk is traded, the Niners are not serious about winning a Super Bowl this year with how Shanahan treats rookies. That's part of it, too. Shanahan does not really like to play rookies. He still would have some of the best weapons. It would still be the best offense in the league. You still have CMC and Kittle and Debo. Like, how many weapons is Kyle Shanahan, who's supposed to be the best play caller in the league, how many weapons do you need? Not many teams have four amazing weapons. Like, having three amazing weapons is insane enough. You, If you need the fourth, like, they're and they would add someone else. It's not, and Kyle Shanahan would have to figure out how to, deal with a rookie i mean come on well that's the argument too like you could say trade Ayuk, get 17 plus something from the jags and use it to strengthen another area of your team use it to strengthen the offensive line get a tackle get a guard get a safety a linebacker whatever position the 49 a corner nickel maybe whatever they decide to strengthen and say look our offense is good enough to take the hit we can sustain with just i say just with air quotes McCaffrey, Kittle, Debo, and Brock. He may decide that. And if he does decide that, I wouldn't crush him for that, Michelle. I get that that reasoning. 
there's this draft class is loaded too. So it's not like you would use a number 17 pick on a wide receiver. Cause I don't think that's a spot to use one. The top three guys are gone. And then there is a, 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 a large tier break there. So you wouldn't, you would use a 17th over a pick, uh, hopefully on a tackle to upgrade the right tackle position. And then you can use a 31st overall pick on a wide receiver. That is a perfect spot for one of those guys. And there's going to be many, many options there. It's not like you're just going to fall into one. There's many options. They can go any route that they're looking for. Very many different types of wide receivers. What are they looking for? And then also, if they want to wait to the second, there's still going to be guys there that you can plug and play. Mm -hmm. So I think this is the year to do it. And I don't think it would be that big of a downgrade. I really, really don't to the offense. The offense would have to change. And I know that's scary to some people because change is always scary. Even good change is scary, right? When you get a new job, you may get a new job and a promotion. You're still nervous when you go into work that first day because change in general is scary for a lot of people. Um, but they absolutely could do it. Nick watching on YouTube says, think the 49ers would be interested in Cam Robinson and swapping firsts for Ayuk. I don't know. The Jags would be interested in that. They might say that's too much money. Uh, Cam Robinson's an offensive lineman. Clearly, the 49ers have a need on the offensive line. Although, Michelle, they did re-sign. They extended Colton McKivitz, and today news broke that they have re-signed John Feliciano. So the right, the, the offensive line, the starting offensive line is back for the 49ers. Yeah, I don't know how good that is. But Feliciano, I think, is a nice re-signing to just give them that depth they needed at guard. Uh, he was solid last year. He was solid mm -hmm. enough. And also, he played at left guard, right guard. And it also had some snaps at center. So you can use that versatility. They needed that there. I like the Feliciano re-signing. Uh, nice, cheap re-signing. The McKivitz yep. one, I will not get over. It's ridiculous. But uh, so at least they did something there at guard. I like that. Yes, I, I like the Felicio, Feliciano signing. I think it was just a solid move. I, you can still improve from him. You don't have to like make him the guaranteed starter, but it's also it's flexibility. You don't have to get somebody now at guard in the draft. You're not pigeonholed to do that. And I think that's the 49ers thinking on the offensive line. Yes, we want to improve, but hope for the best, plan for the worst. With the extension to McKivitz and the re-signing of Feliciano, I think that's what the 49ers have done. They have planned for the worst. Well, worst case scenario, they say, we'll go back into the breach with these two guys who we know can get it done enough because we just got to the Super Bowl with them. Yeah, lost the Super Bowl because of McKivitz, but yeah. Well, I think they lost the Super Bowl because Steve Spagnolo ate Kyle Shanahan's lunch and completely outcoached him. I mean, there's many reasons. I'm not just putting on McKivitz, but he was not good enough to be playing in that game. Christopher Johnson, shout out to you. Yeah, new YouTube channel member. We appreciate it. If you want to join Christopher and become part of our community here, please consider it's less than $3 a month. You get custom emojis, priority comment response, membership badges. It's a great way to support the channel. Thank you. Thank you to Christopher and all our YouTube channel members. Let's get to more of that. Oh, as Strawberry React says, did they officially re-sign Chris Connolly? I don't know if it's official yet, but I know they were working on that. That was very, very close. Um, so I don't know if it's official, but it looks like that's going to happen. Ray Ray McLeod is now signed with someone else too. So uh, <laughs> the yeah. 49ers now have to figure out their returner. Yes, that's okay. Adios, Ray Ray McLeod going to the Atlanta Falcons. Don't let the door hit you in the you way. You know out. what might be really interesting. So if they did trade, um, if they did trade Brandon Ayuk for the 17th overall pick, use that on a tackle or best player available. And then they did use their 31st overall pick on a wide receiver. It took Xavier Worthy, who just beat the record for the 40-yard dash, at a ton of speed. He was already considered a first-round pick before then, right? Uh, but then he just showed how fast he is on top of that. That like, really proved it. So they took him, also used him as a returner, not just the wide receiver across from Debo. That could be a really nice addition. Get somebody or don't get somebody and let Ayuk return kicks and let Debo or let Ayuk return punts and let Debo return kicks. I'd be totally fine with that. Well, that's just extra ways to get your guys hurt. I think Ray Ray McLeod had like 14 kick returns the whole year. It's not even like really a thing anymore. Um, especially what they might change the kick return rules now to make it like even less violent. I don't know. I, I don't put returner at a huge priority. This team has gone. What is it now? 20, 13 years without a punt return touchdown. Would 14 years really kill them? I don't I care do think if they... punt returner is a bit more important than kick returner because 
so many of the kicks just go out of the end zone and it's just a touchback anyways. But punt returners, that can really change the game with where you start up on. If you have a special one, I, that's what it comes down to, though. Like, I mean, almost everyone just has kind of the same guy kind of just putting you in the same spot. But if you do have a special one, that is a huge, huge advantage. So I'm just saying where they could do that. I would be fine with never putting a punt returner back there and just downing it. Because you know what? There's no chance of a fumble if that happens. Just try to block the punt every time. There's also no chance of returning it. Fine. I got the offense. to. That's fine. We'll take our chances with the offense. That's why you're not a a coach. I would much, much rather do that than have. I was terrified every time the ball got kicked to Ray Ray McLeod. I will not miss that feeling. I think that was me getting into your head, though, because I don't think if I told you how bad he was for the Steelers, you would have been that worried because he never fumbled for the 49ers, I don't think. Oh, yes, he did. He had big fumbles for the 49ers. Did he? One, he didn't dive on the ball in the Super Bowl, which he didn't fumble it. It went off of Luter. He also had a fumble last year in the playoffs on one of his returns. Oh, no, no. He absolutely did. Oh, so he just waits for the playoffs to make. Right. So, yeah. Well, that's what he did with the Steelers every single game that he played. Uh, So he he did pick it up with the 49ers. But, yeah, they could definitely improve there. (laughs) Waynesy says, stats giving us a free ticket to the gun (laughs) show today because I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt. Yeah, look at these arms, man. Ooh, look at the gun show. They're so white. Well, also, yeah, this light I have is not doing me any favors. Uh, I'm throwing up on the screen, if you're watching on YouTube, the free agency tracker, which doesn't look good because it's a square. But nonetheless, the returns for the 49ers, they brought back Brandon Allen, Ben Barch, George Odom, Kevin Givens, Demetrius Flanagan Foles, and John Feliciano. They've lost Isaiah Oliver, Charlie Warner, Cleveland Farrell, Javon Kinlaw, Sam Darnold, Eric Armstead, Matt Pryor, and Ray Ray McLeod. How are you feeling about overall what the 49ers have done so far? I like the Leonard Floyd edition. I do. I think that's an upgrade to what they had last year. I don't really care for any of the other editions. I think the Malik Collins one was necessary, but I still think it's a downgrade from Eric Armstead. So, but at least he's healthier, right? So it's a downgrade from a healthy Eric Armstead. But that's been an issue as of late. And we don't know how long, uh, you know, his issues are going to hold up with this. We don't know if he's ever going to be fully healthy for an entire season. Right. So I I do think this move was kind of more necessary. I'm fine with it. It doesn't excite me. Uh, I do think they get worse as a run defense without Eric Armstead. But again, would he have been healthy the whole year? Who knows? I did hear yesterday Levin talking about how he thinks that Collins get off is so much better, right? Than Armstead. I was just going to try to like prove that for Levin (laughs) to like talk him up to talk Collins up, but Malik Collins, that is, but actually it's just not true. According to next gen stats, Armstead's get off last year was 0.95 seconds. Collins was 1.0 Hargrave was 0.92. So the fastest Hmm. of the bunch And then he's actually below average for the defensive tackles last year in Collins. The average defensive tackle get off was 0.98 last year. Collins was at 1.0. Armstead was a little bit above that again at 0.95. So a little bit different. I will say his time to pressure was time to pressure was better than Armstead. So that's good. But still, it wasn't. It was still slightly below the average of all defensive tackles in the league. Interesting. I like that. Thank you for digging those up. I think the 49ers are like, we think we can get somewhat comparable production more consistently on the field and for much cheaper. I think that's those the combination of all of those is why they made that move. And they they only gave up a seventh round pick to get him. Yeah. Initial, initially, he was supposed to be traded. It was supposed to be Armstead for Malik Collins, but that fell through when the Texans got Daniel Hunter. So they just ended up trading Malik Collins for a seventh round pick. So I like the Malik Collins movie. He's not like a superstar, but I think he could be a, a really good, solid player. We know he can play in this defense, obviously, because he played with D'Amico Ryans last year. I love the Leonard Floyd move. I think Leonard Floyd is exactly what they needed. They need a, that he's producing at a level that's more than anybody opposite Nick Bosa has produced since D Ford. And the one other thing that Leonard Floyd brings is effort. Everybody says Leonard Floyd just goes, you know, whistle to whistle. Balls to the wall every single play. What did we hear all the complaints about the 49ers defense leading up to the Super Bowl? Oh, they're not trying hard enough on defense. Well, you solve that problem. 
Yeah, and his effort's clearly showing with the sack. So I don't really care if it's effort or talent. Like, clearly yes. it's both. You can't just go out there and try really hard and get sacks. Like, <laughs> you, you still need to have talent as well. He's still a very talented guy. One of three players to have nine plus sacks in each of the last four seasons. Nine plus sacks in four straight seasons. That's just impressive no matter what. But again, just one of three guys to do it in the NFL. The other two are Miles Garrett and Hassan Reddick. So, what he's done is impressive. Tenth most sacks in the NFL since 2020. More sacks than Brian Burns, who just got traded for a ton and got a huge contract. Mm -hmm. And only two and a half less sacks than Max Crosby since 2020. So, like, this guy is getting it done, and that's all they need. They don't need another young stud like Nick Bosa. Like, you can't afford to pay two guys like that. Maybe you can happen to fall into another one in the draft and get lucky, but you can't afford to bring another guy in a free agency and pay him. Uh, even close to what Nick Bose is getting. That just wouldn't make any sense. So Leonard Floyd, a cheap option who produces. So I really like this signing by that. hundred percent. Hasn't missed a game in six years. Sign Knock me on up what? that. Knock on what? True. Modelo time, 1999 watching on Twitch says Kittle and Hargrave's contract were restructured. Yes, that is correct. Both of that news came out today. The Hargrave restructure. First, I was like, oh no, what are we doing? But apparently they didn't add any new void years to the deal. So it's not like, oh, they're kicking the can down the road again. So that's good, I guess. And they also restructure George Kittle. That freed up about $10 million. George Kittle is going to play for this team forever, apparently. Um, <laughs> so the Niners are, are freeing up space. I saw a tweet from Matt Mayoko. Let's see if I can pull it up on the screen quickly as I stall for time. That the Niners have the most cap space following adjustments of anybody in the league. Thirty-six Whoa. million dollars. Okay, right. That's what the tweet so, says. It says NFL maybe teams. Maybe they're trying to get the money to pay Ayuk, but then even you said that could lower his cap hit. Yeah. So they could even get more there. Yeah, Mayoko's tweet. NFL teams with the most salary cap room following 49ers contract adjustments. He has one Niners, thirty-six million three hundred ninety-five thousand two hundred sixty-six. Then it's the Browns, Cards, Bengals, Commanders, according to the NFLPA. So, okay. That's a I thing. Mean, it would have been nice if they could have figured that out before free agency started and spent it before, you know, all these really good players dried up. But there's still guys out there, but I don't expect any of the guys that are out there to receive big contracts because right. clearly they're not going to. So I don't really know why they freed up this much room. I mean, the, the, the draft class is going to cost, I think the number they said was around $11 million. I could be wrong on that, but I think that's Unless the they find the trade for someone. Right, but like, right. So if you were to trade Debo, you would take a pretty big cap hit, right? Uh, let me see if I can bring that up on the screen or at least check that. If you were to trade Debo before June 1st, that's the key. If you were to trade Debo before June 1st, you would take a $26.4 million cap hit. If you free up $36 million in cap room, but why would they want to do that? I just don't understand. Well, I and again, I'm just I have no idea. This may have nothing to do with the Debo Samuel trade. I'm just it it does seem like a hell of a lot of cap room to free up. Yeah, it does. There's still guys out there I want the 49ers to sign. They don't need 36 million dollars to do it, that's for sure. But there there's guys on the offensive line like Connor Williams. I would love them to bring him in at center, dealing coming off of a torn ACL. Sure, you might not be ready, fully ready for the season, but would be a massive upgrade to Jake Brendel once he is ready. Let Jake Brendel start the season, fine. And then you'll have Connor Williams the second half of the season. It just gives you more depth as well overall, right? Maybe Jake Brendel can, I mean, it'd even be nice to have a nice backup in Brendel for center, or I don't know if Brendel could move to a guard position and play there, but also Connor Williams has um, experience at guard too. So just flexibility there. And then Kevin Zeitler, 34 years old. I really want them to sign him to a guard position. I know like Aaron Banks, I guess is okay, but he's still really, really below average compared to everyone else. If they could change Burford, and Aaron Banks to Zeitler and Feliciano. I think immediately you have yourself an offensive line that you feel much better about in terms of a Super Bowl contender team next year. We got a little breaking news on the show, Michelle. Ann Rappaport uh -oh. just posted the Niners have are, are signing former Packers star linebacker Ooh. Devondre Campbell to a one-year deal. This, of course, is coming because they thought they had Eric Kendricks, and then he left them at the altar. 
and went to the Dallas Cowboys. So they had to make a move at linebacker. And apparently we now know what it is. I think that's a great move. I didn't even remember that he was a free agent because I forgot that they just cut him. But this was a recent cut by the Packers because they paid him a lot of money a couple off seasons ago. So to, just to save some money here, they had to cut him. But I think this is a really, really nice signing for the Packers or for the 49ers. The Niners obviously needed help at linebacker. Dre Greenlaw is going to be back at some point, but he could very well start the season on the pup list, which would mean you'd need somebody to play next to Fred Warner. They wanted Eric Hendricks. I loved the Eric Hendricks signing, but yeah, look, me too. stuff happens. Nobody did anything wrong. You know, I use the expression left him at the altar. You can leave somebody at the altar. Like until you are married, you ain't married. And it's the same thing that happened with Eric Hendricks and the Niners. I don't know anything about Devondre Campbell. Um, I'm tending to say if he was available at this time, how good can he be? But that's not really fair to him. Well, he also just got cut. So it wasn't like teams were expecting him to be available. So uh, I, I think this is a nice signing. Again, it's not like this is going to be a huge, he's not going to be a huge impact player for your team, but that's not what you needed. You needed some depth here for when Greenlaw is still working to get fully healthy or just to, even if Greenlaw is ready to go for the season, it, you shouldn't be giving him a full workload right off the bat coming off a torn Achilles. So this just allows more flexibility. I do think Campbell's a plenty enough good linebacker here to fill the need for this spot this upcoming year. And is it a one-year deal or what did they give him? Do we know? It's a one-year deal. Oh yeah. That's great. Great. Sorry. People in the chat were mad at me because I didn't see the Campbell news right away. I'm sorry. I'm trying to host the show. I'm trying to listen to Michelle. I do try and check the chat. I don't always see things right away. Uh, Campbell for anyone that, put stock in this got a 65.3 overall grade from pff last season 67.7 against the run 71.7 against the pass and 61 in coverage so again i i you know you're not signing an all pro here but like you said you don't necessarily need an all pro you need funny, some... was, wasn't he an all pro just a couple years ago uh that i don't know off the top of my head because you keep saying you're not or you didn't keep saying but you said he's not you're not signing an all pro but i actually think he was an all pro in 2021 a current all pro how's that okay. yeah he was, signing... he was first team all pro in 2021 and he's 30 years old again yeah just tread water keep the ship afloat until dre greenlaw can get you know back to 100 percent. so i'm on board with that it had to be done and, and all these moves, Michelle, I feel like all these moves are just giving the 49ers more flexibility in next month's draft. Except you could maybe argue mm -hmm. corner, nickel corner. But other than that, I feel like they don't have a glaring need that they have to address in the first round of the draft in April. No. Uh, well, yeah. I, I mean, they do have a pl pretty glaring need, uh, right tackle. I don't care that they extended McKivitz that that's a glaring need to me but that's it I don't think they look at it that way well they should so I hope they do <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean and guard but with Feliciano like you said re-signing I, I don't think it's such a glaring need anymore but they really need to bring in more depth at guard as well but the right tackle is the biggest need on this team I think nickel corner. I would put nickel corner there right now because right now. McKivitz is not good. I'm not arguing that. But Ambry Thomas was hideous. Was hideous. Uh, and Isaiah Oliver was worse. Now, Isaiah Oliver is obviously gone now, but they're going to have to find some solution to that. Yeah. I feel like corner, though, you can get luckier in the draft as you go on second, third round. You can still find a nickel corner that can start for you. A tackle it's really hard to find, right? It's really hard to find good starting tackles, especially as rookies. So I do think that 17th overall pick where they're sitting right now, it's going to be very hard for them to pick anything else, but a tackle. And that's not a great situation to be in 31st overall. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm already 17th. giving them, I'm already <laughs> giving them 17th from the Jaguars, but yeah, I guess 31st, which is not ideal either. Cause yeah, but apparently this is supposed to be a really good tackle class or offensive line class. So maybe, maybe they can find a guy in the second round. Nicholas watching on YouTube says he's referencing the article that Mike Silver wrote and silver basically says that Kyle Shanahan is being honest with himself after the Super Bowl lost, uh, after the Super Bowl loss, excuse me. Kyle Shanahan essentially in the article said it's my fault for hiring Wilkes, but his article didn't make Kyle Shanahan look as good as intended. I completely agree. 
So I read the Mike Silver article yesterday. I reread it this morning and I was like, this is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. And I wrote a story about this on our website, goldstandardniners.com. There were a couple of things in the article that popped out to me. First and foremost, here's how the article starts. In recent conversations with confidants at the 49ers training facility, Kyle Shanahan wasn't afraid to admit the truth. The Niners were fortunate to have made it to Vegas in the first place. They probably should have lost their opener to Green Bay and needed a huge second half comeback fueled by a 51-yard pass that bounced off a defender's face mask to overcome Detroit in the NFC Championship game. Okay, that's a decent start. But unfortunately, after that, it just turns into a list of Kyle Shanahan who he blames. One, the pass rush. Two, Steve Wilkes and not integrating with the scheme. Three, Cleveland Farrell's injury. Four, Chase Young. Nowhere in the article does he blame himself for the horrible game management decisions that he made. And so, or, when... or, or not putting up more than 19 points in regulation with all your weapons and you being the best play caller. Like your right. defense held. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs to 19 points in regulation, and you had to go to overtime. That's on you, Kyle. That's on you. Not all just the defense. Your offense was three of 12 on third down in the Super Bowl. And this is how the article ends. And this is what really, really ticked me off. Quote, deep inside, Shanahan knows that the unsatisfying outcome was on him. He hired Wilkes, and it didn't work out. In the end, his guys weren't good enough. That the head coach is willing to take a long, hard look at the roster and in the mirror is a very positive sign for the 49ers. It would have been, Mike, except that's not what Kyle Shanahan is doing. What Kyle Shanahan is doing is not taking responsibility. He's assigning blame. Essentially, he's saying, you know what, Michelle, you're right. I admit it. It was all Steve Wilkes' fault. It was all the defense's fault. That's not taking responsibility. It's not. So I could not believe that article from Mike Silver, who, again, is very tied in with Kyle Shanahan. He's known Kyle Shanahan since Kyle was 15 years old. I could not believe that article. That article was supposed to make Kyle Shanahan look good. Like, oh, see, Kyle gets it now. No, he still doesn't get it. He That's a wild statement for him to make. Like, I put blame on myself. I, I hired. <laughs> I right. hired. Well, it's like that's like our show fumbling, like not having a good show or something. You're like, <laughs> right. you know what, guys? It, it, it's my fault. I hired Michelle. You right. Know? <laughs> like, exactly. That's, what that's, if I said that? What if I was like, guys, I just want to apologize right now. I take full responsibility for the show sucking. I hired Michelle. Like, <laughs> that's exactly what Kyle Shannon is doing. And how Literally. would you feel if I had yeah. said that? You would feel that like I was blaming you. Absolutely wild because yeah, I agree. The Lions game was really bad on the defense. It, it was, but also the offense started slow as well. But uh, for the Super Bowl, you cannot really put that on the defense. Yeah, overtime they didn't do. But Patrick Mahomes, when he this is where he shines in those mm -hmm. moments. You can't allow him to have that moment when he gets the ball last. He's going to score against the best defense in the league. It doesn't matter what play calls you have. He's going to score because that's where he absolutely, that's what makes him the best quarterback in the league. So you can't give him that opportunity and allowing 19 points and over or in the regulation to someone of that caliber of quarterback play and you having all the weapons that you have, Kyle, and you want to be called the best play caller in the league, then you have to score more than 19 points in the Super Bowl. I don't know what to tell you. And, you know, I've been arguing with Rich Madrid on Twitter and like, yeah, Kyle Shanahan wanting to change the defensive scheme and changing the defensive coordinator and stuff. You could say that that's him taking responsibility because he's acknowledging that his decisions didn't work out, but it's not the biggest reason that they didn't. He's still pointing to other people. You know, Jimmy Johnson, when he was the head coach at Miami and he'd have a player that would screw up, he would go to the player and he would say, it's not your fault. Don't worry about it. Don't even let it bother you. It's not your fault. I recruited you. That's messed up. That is yeah. not, that is not being introspective. That is blaming somebody else in a very funny and creative way. So I couldn't believe that article. And also in the article, Silver gives Kyle Juszczyk credit for helping the 49ers free up cap space. Hey, Mike, he freed up $1.75 million. Let's not bend over backwards to praise Kyle Juszczyk for how much he's helping the 49ers save cap space. 
this that article is just driving me crazy. Also, like, do we want to talk about how uh, Steve Wilkes held the Chiefs and in, in this defense held the Chiefs with three points in the first half? This is when they should have really taken advantage. And it came to Dre Greenlaw getting injured where they really started to struggle against the Chiefs. Like, maybe don't allow those situations to happen. Have a bigger lead when your defense holds uh, Patrick Mahomes with three points in the first half. Again, like, I feel like Kyle just blames everyone but himself and like that him trying to come off as like the, the, the bigger man here. Right. <laughs> while saying that is absurd is that's absurd. Yeah. Not, uh, not really looking too good. I'm seeing people in the chat. See, I do watch the chat. What is someone G- saying, oh, God, no, Jimmy G about that. Better JCG 1987 YouTube channel member says KMBR said they wouldn't mind bringing Jimmy back to the Niners. No, they're done with Jimmy Garoppolo. They were so annoyed with Jimmy Garoppolo. They were going to bring the ghost of Philip Rivers out of retirement to play in the Super Bowl if they had made it there. When uh, Brock Purdy got hurt. No, 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 no. That is not happening under any circumstance. I don't know. I don't know. I can see it. If he comes back fully knowing he's the backup because he failed with another team. I mean, he's not going to get signed for a starting job right now. Why wouldn't you come back as a backup? I could see, I could see it. Shanahan wanting him as a backup. I could see it happening. Why? He's always hurt. You I think just have to a drive backup. you crazy. I think it's going to happen. Just to Well, let me just crazy. tell you. Would you rather have Sam Darnold or Jimmy Garoppolo as a backup? Oh, God, why are those my only two options? I'd rather have me as a backup. Uh, I'm seeing another tweet from Aaron Wilson. Says the 49ers agree to terms with Chase Lucas, who apparently is another special teams ace. He's a gunner. He also works at Nickel Corner. Matt Barrows says it's a one-year deal. So there you go. Maybe the 49ers have their answer to Ray Ray McLeod. I don't know. I don't know how good, you know, I don't know how good he is. I don't know anything about Chase Lucas, to be honest with you. It just a special teamer, so I don't really think he's going to have a big role in offense or defense. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm not going to pretend to know about Chase Lucas, but that is a thing that happened, so we, we want to talk about it. Um, the other part, there were a couple other things in that Mike Silver article, one of which we touched on with the Brandon Ayuk trade stuff. The other thing in there is that he says Kyle Shanahan has made had to make some hard decisions this offseason, and one of the things he mentions is that Talanoa Hufanga might not get his starting job back. And I was like, wait a minute. (laughs) Is this just because he's coming off a torn ACL or is this because they have some deep underlying issue with Talanoa Hufanga? Because I love Hufanga. I know he's not perfect. He's got some warts, but I certainly didn't think it would be enough to not let him start. But I don't know. Has he, Michelle? You dug into some of the numbers. Yeah, and he's good. I don't understand this. Hufanga should 100% be the starter if healthy. And also, like, who else would it be? Because they have Jair Brown and who else? Like, I don't really know the other options here. But even if it came down to Jair Brown or Hufanga, I want Hufanga. So uh, all these ranks I'm going to give are among 92 safeties with 200-plus coverage snaps. So I went with 200 coverage snaps as the minimum there. And that's 92 safeties in the league that played that money this year. Yards per reception allowed. Hufanga was at seventh best among safeties. Only allowed 7.4 yards per reception. Gibson was at 9.220, ranked 20th. J.R. Brown ranked 57th um, among safeties in that category. 12.4. So a good five more yards per reception allowed by J.R. Brown than Hufanga. And then allowed for yards per target. Brown was at 9.6 yards per target. Allowed 73rd among those 92 safeties. So not great. And then coverage snaps per reception. So how many coverage snaps that you played per reception allowed? Hufanga was at 28 snaps played per reception allowed. That ranked 19th among these 92 safeties. That's very, very solid. Now, Gibson ranked second in the NFL. He was fantastic. And J.I.R. Brown also ranked pretty good at 24th. So they had three good guys there. The big one was missed tackle rate. Hufanga was only down at 6.1% missed tackle rate. Really, really great, but well above average. Gibson was at 10%, kind of middle of the pack. J.R. Brown was at 26.1% missed tackle rate. Woof, brutal. Third highest missed tackle rate among those safeties, among those 92 safeties. But also what I loved about Hufanga is that you could see the growth from year one as a starter to year two. So in 2022, he allowed six touchdowns, uh, four interceptions, 11 yards per reception, and 20, he had 21 snaps per reception allowed. 
And 2023 allowed just one touchdown, still had three interceptions in the 10 games, 7.4 yards per reception. So that went down by 3.6 and then 28 snaps per reception allowed. So went from 21 to 28 snaps that he played per reception allowed. You saw the improvement from first year as a starter to second year. Hufanga, 100% is a great starting safety in this league. I really like him. I, thank you for digging into all that. That is awesome stuff. The, the Jair Brown tackling thing, yeah, he's got to get better at that. He, that was clearly a bugaboo for him. If this is just about Hufanga's knee and maybe there's concerns about his rehab or something like that, I totally understand that. But if this is about something else, I, I think it's crazy. The other thing with Hufanga, he's always around the ball. He is. He just has a knack for making big plays. Who recovers the block punt against the Packers and runs it in for a touchdown? Talanoa Hufanga. He's always around the ball. He he sneaks into the backfield and makes plays in the backfield and blows stuff up. He's scooping up fumbles. He just some guys have a natural instinct for being around the ball, and he clearly is one of them. He's that playmaker guy that just runs around the field with his head cut off, but you need that type of guy and you cannot have it at all the positions because it can right. be dangerous. It can <laughs> value, right? But I do think Hufanga brings that special piece that they don't have elsewhere where he just is that playmaker. He somehow tends to be in the right spots at the right time and he's going to blow up players and he's going to get those interceptions and make those splash plays. I think Hufanga is insanely important to this defense and uh, yeah, you might want someone a little bit safer across from him. Maybe they do add a safety, but Hufanga it should not be an option of not having his starting job next year, unless the unless he's not fully healthy. Right, unless it's about health. I completely agree with you. And Andre says, no way do they get rid of Huff. He has a nose for the ball. Maybe he won't be ready, but they ain't getting, getting rid of him. To be clear, Mike Silver didn't say they're getting rid of Hufanga. He said he might not regain his starting job. So that's... You know, that's two different things. Uh, I really hope that they let him develop, go into the season. Give me Jair Brown and Talanoa Hufong at the safety spot. I would love to see that. Let them grow together. Like you pointed out, Hufong is already growing. Yeah. I'm a little bit worried about Jair Brown, but he can grow. But I would like them to add more depth at safety. Michelle is very... I Very. really want them to add Ashton Davis. That's who I really want them to add. Let Jair Brown compete with Ashton Davis, who's a veteran. Ashton Davis played on the very, very good Jets defense. Now, he had a lot of competition there, so he only had five starts because their defense is so good. But started 21 starts in this game. Ashton Davis had a career high last year with three interceptions and um, also allowed the second lowest passer rating among all players with 20-plus targets last year behind only to Sean Gibson. Uh, so I would really like them to add Ashton Davis. I think he's a cheap option at safety and he at least brings in competition for Jair Brown, but also it's not, you're not going to have to pay him where you're like, okay, well we have to start Ashton Davis now. It's just, it's depth and it's competition. And that's what I would like. Um, Mike Silver did say in that article that safety was definitely a position the Niners were looking at. Uh, and God knows there's still a bunch of good safeties on the market. So if that's a position you need, you've got options there, which is obviously good news for the 49ers. Strawberry React says everyone was worried about Huff before year two, and then he made all pro that year. He, he made all pro. I think he made it mostly because he came out of the gate and was on fire. I feel like he fell off a little bit as the year went along. Um, I think he was more impressive this year than he was his first year, even though he got all pro his first year. And I don't think he was on his way to getting all pro this year, even if he stayed healthy. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think he was just a little bit more stable. Uh, he had more experience and that's going to happen. I'm not saying J.R. Brown can't grow. I just don't want them to go into the season saying, yep, he's going to grow. You don't know. You've got to give him at least competition. you got to have depth. And then either way, you can't just go in with Jair Brown and Hufanga, Hufanga coming off a very serious knee injury and just say, yep, we're good. You need depth either way. Apparently, Devondre Campbell, who the Niners just signed, uh, posted on Instagram, someone is about to get a great football player that's been badly misused. Oh, well, let's get it, though. Okay. I like that. Don't lose that confidence. We'll see if it comes true. Shades by Chardal says, give me Justin Simmons at safety. Speaking of former all pros, he was let go by the Denver Broncos. He's going to be pricey. He's going to be pricey. Yeah, I'm fine with them spending at safety if they want to go that route. Uh, I just would also be totally fine if they were like, nope, let's bolster the offensive line, bolster the wide receiver position, and we'll live with 
Talanoa Hufanga and Jair Brown. You are very hesitant to get off your opinions of players. You didn't like Jimmy Ward. You didn't like Jaquaski Tart. You were- why do you say I didn't like Jimmy Ward? I always said Jimmy Ward was very, very solid. I don't know why you put him into this. You hated Jimmy Ward for years. I never the criticism hated Jimmy has Ward. been nonstop. I hated Jaquiski Tart and I hated uh K1 uh Williams. Whatever. Williams. Yeah. So those two guys. And those are the guys I don't even think are on a team right now. So you love Justin Fields, despite no evidence that he can be a good professional quarterback and you love Hollywood Brown Michelle who is just in the news because he's now going to be with Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City I have gotten off Hollywood Brown I'll say that but it's a nice landing spot for him I don't think it really is there they were acting last night with this signing I mean how many notifications came in from Ian and Adam Schefter about this Marquise Brown signing being like a big sign and we thought they're gonna have to wait until after they traded Legereus Sneed and it's like mm-hmm. guys it was one year seven million dollar deal but the same <laughs> that Colton McKibbitt's got like relax yeah relax um but yeah I, I mean I'm not not on Jair Brown I'm just saying that can't you cannot you really think they can just go in with Brown and Hufanga and not add anybody else that you feel good about not add depth and not add competition and you're fine with well, that? Well, you got to add depth for sure. Like, you literally don't, you need more safeties on the team. But if they went in with those two guys as their starter, no, I wouldn't be like sweating bullets or anything. If they no. went in as their starters because they won, it, well, I'm not, Hufanga's a starter. But if Brown went in because he won the competition in training camp, 1000% that makes me feel good going into the season. But if he's competing against, you know, a fifth round rookie and that's who his competition is, that's who his depth is then no, I'm not going to feel as confident. Chad Marshall says, Michelle just hates safeties and Juwan. By the way, I meant to ask you, Michelle. So I looked into, because I need to buy a Sam Darnold jersey. Mm-hmm. They don't have my size. Do you care if it's like giant? Because the no, only size just is... make it funnier. Okay, good. Then I will buy it. I, I just wanted to check with you. Um, I wanted to give you the option to have me do something else. Be swimming in Sam Darnold's jersey. You're gonna look like you're wearing your boyfriend's jersey. It, it would Darnold. look like the actual Sam Darnold's jersey if I were to actually wear it. Uh, Daza, thank you, Daza says. Rather than safety, can we get a good corner opposite Ward and keep Diamador Lenore in the slot? I don't know who they would get at this point, um, but I would be. I do all like for Steven it. Nelson. He's been really solid corner, but he is. I mean. He's 31 years old and he just turned it. So it's not like he's turning 32 anytime soon. I think he's been a very, very solid player for, he was a solid player for the chiefs. Then he went to the Steelers. I was sad when they had to move on because they couldn't afford him. He ended up getting paid with Houston, but uh, he's been good with the chiefs, then the Steelers and now Houston uh, had a career high four interceptions last year, but, and his PFF grades has always been very solid. He's just a solid guy. Very solid vet. So I think Steven Nelson might be a nice depth piece there for them. I'm all for that depth. You can't have enough depth at corner, especially Uh, those guys can get banged up and then you really get put in a bind pretty quickly. I saw Christopher Johnson, new YouTube channel member says, apparently the new acquisition chase Lucas is the player who scrapped with Yamador Lenore after the NFC championship game. A video is floating around X. Okay. I I don't think the 49ers players are going to hold it against him. The lions had just, given up the biggest comeback, tied for the biggest comeback in NFC Championship game history at that point. I'm sure emotions were riding high. I don't think that they're going to be like, oh, we don't like you now. I think that's not going to be a problem. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. These guys fight with each other in practice, and they're like besties, so they'll get over it. Right. Uh, we're it would be, so, uh, we got a comment before you get into that. Sneed, pay the guy. It would be hilarious if they went, like, Traverius Ward, they kind of stole from the Chiefs. They paid him. It would right. be kind of funny <laughs> if they added the two Chiefs corners. We'll just take the Chiefs cast out, and then they keep beating us in Super Bowls. That wouldn't be funny. <laughs> Warlock says, hey, Michelle and Stats, worried about our quarterbacks, Purdy, Allen, and a rookie. Can our second or third string take us far in the playoffs if Purdy gets hurt? Almost all, no backups can take you far in the playoffs. The third string, forget about the third string. Like what what happened with the 49ers is so freaking crazy. Like their third string rookie quarterback, last pick in the draft, got them to the NFC championship game and may have won it if they were healthy. That is fairy tale movie script, like doesn't happen stuff in NFL history. It's a it's a complete outlier. So forget the third string taking you far. Can a backup quarterback take you far? Probably not. Not Brandon Allen. No, no. If they (laughs) did want to bring back Jimmy Garoppolo, if they do want a safer backup quarterback, I don't, when you're such a strong Super Bowl contender, 
right? I really do think you should have a better backup quarterback than Brandon Allen. I'm not saying for them to go get Jimmy Garoppolo because that's a whole other thing with the locker room and a headache, even though I do. And think he sucks, point. Michelle. He's not <laughs> good. He would be fine with Kyle Shanahan again. Like he also brought them to a Super Bowl. Like, no, I know he, no, 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 I, no. I know he didn't do much in the playoffs. But anyways, he does suck. <laughs> But in terms of backup quarterbacks, he sucks to be a starter. But as a backup quarterback, and I do think him coming back, the team is fully behind Brock Purdy now. There would be no questions. I'm not saying I want it to happen. I do think it'd be hilarious because I want to see your reaction. So that's why I don't want it to happen. I just want to see you die inside and have like (laughs) and have those all of those emotions. But I do think they do they need a better, more reliable backup than Brandon Allen just because of it's Super Bowl or bust, and you can't just have it all leaning on Brock Purdy's health all year long. Yeah, Jimmy, I miss the way we were, man. Jason Ponte, that drop will live forever. Um, not to mention Jimmy Garoppolo suspended for the first couple of games of 2024 well, as hopefully well. Hopefully Brock Purdy's not hurt the first couple of games. No, Jimmy ain't it. He ain't it. He's not good enough, plus the locker room stuff. So who do you Hell. want as a backup? Brandon Allen. Why? I don't want my starter to get hurt. That's what I want. Okay, the but last three you need times, a backup that's can come in and win a couple games. And they, I think they think that's what Brandon Allen could do. Hell, they thought Sam Darnold could do it last year, and Brandon Allen can't be worse than Sam Darnold. The last three times Kyle Shanahan has had his starting quarterback healthy enough to start every game in the regular season, he has gone to the Super Bowl. He did it with Matt Ryan, he did it with Jimmy Garoppolo, and he did it with Brock Purdy last year. That is an insane fact. So just don't, how about the starter just doesn't get hurt? Let's just do that. That would be great. But still, Brandon Allen should be quarterback three. But Elliot. they can draft a guy later. Maybe someone keeps mentioning Joe Milton. I mean, sure. Sure. I, I think they will draft a quarterback. I'd like to see them draft a quarterback. Uh, again, I'm I'm still not in the pay Brock Purdy after next year. I'm not there yet. No way. Absolutely I'm not. I'm, I'm not there. I've said all along, I want to see two seasons before I declare a guy a franchise quarterback. If I can't declare you a franchise quarterback, I ain't paying you $50, $60 million a year. So that has been my stance on Brock Purdy. It is not changing. Elliot Mata says, thoughts on the Devondre Campbell pickup? Solid, cost-effective move. I think that sums it up, right? Yeah. All pro a couple of years ago, and he just came out to say he's been misused the last couple of years. <laughs> so and, good. I mean, everyone hated Joe Barry, uh, the the defensive coordinator for the Packers last mm-hmm. year. I mean, he was getting as much as people hated Matt Canada at OC. He was right there at defensive coordinator. So maybe he was being misused there. He did have a very, very great year just a couple of years ago. So I like the Campbell pickup, and it's nice that he doesn't have to be a big focal point of this defense whatsoever. He's just mm-hmm. a small piece of it. Gives them doubt that linebacker. So I really like the signing. It, it gives them the ability to not rush uh, Drake Greenlaw back too fast. Even when he is back, doesn't have to play too many snaps right away. Let him come in slowly. So I really like this signing. Just seeing your boy, Jonathan Greener, four year, $76 million deal with the Texans who apparently didn't even make an official offer. They never even tried to keep him. How do you feel about that? If they knew that they weren't going to offer him that much. And True. he's not my boy. He's just someone I would have liked. You love him. favorite have. player ever. <laughs> I love him. Like I just mentioned him as a nice addition for the 49ers. I didn't think he was going to get paid that much. I, I do think I do think he's a solid player, and I do think he can be really good. But that's, a, that's paying a lot of money there for him. Daza0187 says, hey, you know what keeps your starting quarterback healthy? A really good offensive line. You're not yeah. wrong, Daza. I I can't argue with that at all. Well, they need to make a really good offensive line, please. And we still have the draft. We still have 11 picks in the draft. So there's plenty of opportunity for the 49ers to bolster their offensive line. Hopefully they do. Can we can we get like this has been nonstop 49ers news all morning. Really like for the past 3 days every time I tried to do a show it's like, "Oh, no, we got to talk about this first. We got to talk about this first. I mean, since the show started, they've they've shored up special teams with Chase Lucas, and now they've shored up their linebackers with Devondre Campbell. Is any more stuff going to happen today? Oh, you love it. Stop it. I hope so. I would love. I love getting NFL news. I would just take it every every hour. Just give me a new new crazy thing that happens. This has been a great off season so far for just the NFL in general. So much crazy stuff is happening. I love chaos, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Bring it on. 
Whatever happens, we will go live. If anything crazy happens, we'll be here for you. We're not going anywhere all off season long. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell so you'll know every time we go live, which is at least every single weekday for you. You don't want to miss anything. And like we said, with this 49ers team, who the hell knows what's about to happen? If you want to follow Michelle on X, she is at Ball Blast. I'm on all the socials at Stats on Fire. Michelle, what do you got going on this weekend? I'm going to help some friends with their backyard. And that's about it. Nothing crazy. I got kickball at 8.30 again tonight if it doesn't rain. Shades by Chardall says, Michelle, are you happy with Russell Wilson now on the Steelers, who officially signed today? You know what? For whatever reason, I am excited. I know. I know I'm stupid. I know as soon as the season comes, I'm going to hate my life again, <laughs> being a Steelers fan. But it does give me some excitement. At least I'm moving on from Kenny Pickett. I can hold on to that. That is true. What's his uh, stupid Steelers thing going to be? Hopefully nothing. Just just be normal, Russ. That's all we ask. Just be a normal dude, please. We're not going to... The they don't deal with his type. <laughs> like, Pittsburgh is very much like a... I don't Blue know. Blue collar, no-nonsense yeah. town. Yeah, it, it's not really a Russell Wilson type. But I, 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 I don't mind Russell Wilson. He's He says some really corny stuff. But besides that, he seems like a good dude. John Feliciano just tweeted, best day ever, staying in San Francisco and Aaron Donald retiring. <laughs> True. Well played, John Feliciano. Nice to see you contributing something good on Twitter for a change instead of throwing Spencer Burford under the bus. All right, everybody. Enjoy your Friday and your weekend. We'll talk next week. Bye, y'all.